For an introduction for how these ideas about the harmonic oscillator work in polyatomic molecules, which are the vast majority of all molecules, we're going to look at the 3D harmonic oscillator and try to see some of the trends which will start to generalize once we go to uh, molecules with higher and higher degrees of dimensionality in their coordinates. So let's say we have some particle, and this particle is just some point particle of mass m. Not necessarily a vibrating diatomic in this case, but just something where it has three spatial dimensions in which there can exert potential energy on this particle. And this potential energy this particle experiences as a function of its x, y, and z coordinates are one half kx, a spring constant in the x dimension, times x squared plus ky, spring constant in the y dimension, y squared plus kz, z squared. So I have a plot down here uh, just in x and y because we can't plot things in four dimensions. My z-axis here is the potential in x and y. You can see it's just going to experience a quadratic potential in x and in y, and similarly it would in z. So if we want to solve the Schrodinger equation for the wave function and energies of this particle, as we do for all particles, we would try to solve the Schrodinger equation by writing out the Hamiltonian. So minus h bar squared over 2m for our kinetic energy part. Since we're in multiple dimensions, we have the Laplacian operator, which is the multidimensional uh, extension of the second derivative within just second derivative with respect to x. It's partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z, second partial derivative, plus v of x, y, z all of that being the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi equals e times psi, where psi is also some function of x, y, and z. So this whole thing here, let's remind ourselves, is our Hamiltonian operator h. Let's make that a little bit bigger. h. OK, so in order to tackle this, we can quickly see that our potential energy function is factorizable into these three different terms. We have v equals vx plus vy plus vz, where vx equals one half kx x squared, and vy equals the analogous term, vz equals the analogous term, one half kz z squared. So we can factor our potential energy into these individual terms here of just one dimension. And similarly, we have these individual terms for kinetic energy, which we can factorize into their dimensions as well. We can factorize the kinetic energy operator T into Tx plus Ty plus Tz, where Tx is just the type of kinetic energy operator we're familiar with minus h bar squared over 2m and partial derivative square second partial derivative with respect to x okay so both the potential and the kinetic energy are what we would describe as being separable so they can each of these dimensions can be separated into a function which depends only on one dimension at a time the we can separate it into a function of of x a function of y and a function of z. So our total Hamiltonian can equal a Hamiltonian of x, y, and z. And because of this, we can use separation of variables that we've been using uh, pretty much every time in this playlist that we've encountered uh, partial derivatives or multidimensional functions. And this means that we're going to have a wave function which is a product of three one-dimensional wave functions, psi x, psi y, and psi z. And then all we have to do is solve the individual functions to get the total wave function and the total energy back. So if we look at this, we just have to solve something like h i psi of i equals e i psi i, where i equals one of the Cartesian dimensions x, y, or z. Because we have our k 
kinetic and potential energy for each of these individual dimensions here. But we already know how to solve this equation because this is just a equivalent to the to the Schrodinger equation for a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. So the energy levels that we're going to get back when we solve this equation here are just going to be the energy levels of the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. So E of ni, where you have some quantum number in the dimension i, it's just going to be equal h nu i, the vibrational frequency in the Cartesian dimension i, times the quantum number in that dimension plus one half. Again, where ni is some integer starting at zero, and nu i equals Am I going to run out of space? Let's see. 1 over square root of 2 pi k i over m. OK, just barely on there. So because there's a spring constant, a potential stiffness in each dimension, there is a that plays into what the vibrational frequency is for each dimension and determines what the allowed energy levels are going to be in each dimension. So if we go ahead and plot what this will look like. And also we can note that the total energy that we look at, the total energy is just going to be a sum of the energy of from the quantum number in the x direction, the quantum number in the y direction, and the quantum number in the z direction. So we're going to get some contribution from the x direction in a, in a form like this, some contribution from y, some contribution from z. So let's plot some energy in units of h nu. And let's say, using the same colors we used over here, let's say nu, let's say h nu x that is going to be equal to 3, just arbitrarily picking based off of some imaginary, some hypothetical constant here. Let's say h nu y equals 1, and let's say that h nu z equals 2. Okay, so the first state for x is going to be at, uh, it's going to be at 3 times 0 plus 1 half, so that's going to be 3 halves. So we have a state here. The next one is going to be at 3 times 1 plus 1 half. So 3 times 3 halves, which is going to be 9 halves. Yes. So 1, 2, 3. Going to be up there. These energy levels much more spaced apart than the other two will be. For y, the energy if h nu y is 1, we have 1 times 0 plus 1 half is going to give those two multiplied together gives us 1 half. The second state is at 3 halves, then 5 halves, 7 halves, 9 halves, etc. And for z, if, if h nu z is equal to 2, at n equals 0, we have 2 times 1 half is 1. At n equals 1, we have 2 times 1 plus 1 half, 3 halves. 2 times 3 halves is 3, so our second state is there. Our third state is going to be at 5, etc., going up like that. So the spacing and the total of the energy levels is just going to depend on what the spring constant is in each dimension, and that affects what the vibrational frequency is in each dimension, how spaced apart the energy levels are. Let's look at one more special case before we go. Let's look at the case of kx equals ky equals kz just equals k. And in that case, we would have that the total energy, E, is just equal to um, h nu, where nu is just 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m. And it's going to be nx plus ny plus nz plus, and there would be a one half from each dimension. So there's one half from x, one half from y, one half from z, 
for a total of three halves. So our energy is just h nu times a sum of all of the individual quantum numbers. So going back to the concept of degeneracy that we looked at when we looked at the three-dimensional harmonic oscillator, let's look again at energy in units of E over h nu. If we just kind of quickly space those out there. If we have if we have their all three equals zero, then you're just going to have the energy three halves right there. If n1 equals one, ny equals zero, and nz equals zero, then you're going to have five halves. But similarly, we can have one zero zero, we can have zero one zero, and we can have zero zero one. So this state is threefold degenerate. There are three energy levels with the same energy depending on which quantum number is one and which ones are both zero. Then at the next energy level, we could have 200, zero, 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 020, zero, 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 two, or 110, zero, 101, zero, one, zero, one, one, depending on what all the different quantum numbers are that add up to give us this energy totaling up to 7 halves. So now we have a six-fold degenerate state. And this is just going to increase as we go up. I think you can convince yourself with enough time that the fourth state in energy that we get here ends up being I think ends up being tenfold degenerate. There are ten ways to arrange three numbers to from starting at zero to add up to three. So very quickly we get a very heavy degeneracy in these energy levels. And that degeneracy is just a consequence of symmetry. So degeneracy when you have heavy a uh, high number of energy levels which is which are at the for a system then that degeneracy is usually a result of symmetry there's usually some symmetry in the system and in this case the symmetry is that all these spring constants are equal to each other so no matter which dimension the particle moves in it's going to feel the same potential energy and that that symmetry has given us degeneracy here so this is an intro to uh, how the harmonic oscillator works uh, for multi dimensions, and we're going to use this uh, as a springboard to look into how vibrations work for polyatomic molecules.